Hey guys, it's John. You're on the JRB Tree Climbing Channel. I'd like to talk to you about rappel on the Munter Friction Hitch. Bar none, the most popular post on social media, primarily from stick climbers, is how do I rappel? And in particular, folks seem to have an aversion to you know a certain device. Like, how am I going to rappel if I can't find this particular device? Well. In all of my years of rope climbing, the only device I ever used to rappel outside of experimentation is a carabiner using the Munter friction hitch. I can buy other devices and, and, and I have to test them, but I see no reason to change to something more complex or with, with other possible failure modes when the Munter does everything I need. Case in point, I can't drop it. You'll be watching me today as I climb the tree behind me and uh, this contraption on my chest is gonna be holding my cell phone so you can watch the action. This is my primary bridge and beneath it I have a redundant bridge and on that carabiner, identical to this one, I'll be engaging the Munter friction hitch. You could, if you only have a single bridge on your saddle, you could have fixed that beaner elsewhere on your bridge. Uh, but we won't get into that. The point is all I need is a carabiner that's locked in place. This carabiner is locked onto my redundant bridge. It can't come off. And so that's the first failure mode. You always need to think about what happens should I drop my friction device when I'm putting it on. Well, if you got a carabiner, all you need is the munter. And then you can ask yourself, well, did I need anything else? I'll be showing you some tricks for applying more or less friction depending on what you weight, what you weigh. That rope has no idea who's on it, right? And so we'll need more friction if your body weight is higher and less friction if it is less. Uh, I use a friction hitch. Um, and so I'll be executing a climb. We'll, we'll edit that out. I'll be climbing using my JRB hitch climbing method. If you want more information about that, it's on my playlist. The friction hitch I'm using is the JRB Ascender Hitch, one of my designs. There's a playlist on that uh, on my channel. And I will be rappelling off the JRB Hitch, also my design. And there is a knot tying video and dedicated playlist to it and related testing. So I'm going to head on over to the tree I'm wearing my uh, saddle and my entire climbing system really just consists of this uh, piece of sterling Oplux. Okay, so I'm probably about just 20 feet up or so, and we're going to do this rappel in a series of short bursts to just demonstrate different properties of the Munter. So this is the Munter as I look at it. The way you tie it might look a little bit different. First thing to note is that I'm right-handed, so I really like to engage my beaner from right to left. If you are left-handed, you might like to reverse everything. Looking north in the system, best I can here, so there you can see the JRB hitch and the locking beaner that can't be released with that beaner in place. I will need to remove that before I rappel and you won't be watching me do that. The friction hitch is my JRB ascender hitch and it's really, I'm running it in bridge mode and unique thing about it, there's not a lot of friction hitches that you can break under the weight of your full body weight with just one hand and I'll be doing so that's six millimeter cord on eight millimeter rope and so that will not be in your field of view you'll be watching the munter uh, as I load it okay and I'll talk you through it so first things first how do we engage the munter so I'm sorry but this is really really a simple uh, thing to tie. I mean, much easier than tying your shoes. Um, however, it's critically important that we tie it properly. The uh, repercussions of not doing so are, are somewhat obvious, right? Uh, but we do have a friction hitch to, to uh, take care of, of any slippage. So I start, again, being right-handed, I start the munter with an underhand loop to the left. Okay, underhand loop to the left, and then I bring that towards me and this line in front. That is a basic munter. And when I engage my carabiner, I always grab two strands. That's a basic 
Munzer friction hitch. Now, here's the problem with using it this way. For someone at my body weight, so with all my toys on, I probably am close to 200 pounds. I weigh 185. Um, this won't provide quite enough friction. And the other thing it will do is it will spin. It'll create a spin in the rope. And so one thing I've learned to mitigate that is to fold this up. And so I'm going to start this way. It's still not enough friction for me, but let's say you weigh less than I do. Um, this might be a perfect way to repel. So with my right hand, I'm going to be reaching up. I'm going to be disengaging my locking carabiner from my JRB hitch. So that's in my hand and now it's in my bag. And with my right hand now, I'll be breaking the JRB ascender hitch. And so you can watch this take load. I intentionally have just a little bit of slack in it. You know, normally I'd, I'd take all the slack out that I can, but let's, let's watch that take load. I'll do my best to keep you in. So I'm breaking the hitch. And now it's starting to take load. And so now my bridge, you can see it's it's loose. There's, there's nothing on it. All of the tension is being, you can see that months are working. But I have to give this a fair amount of hand strength to keep me in place. And so it's not quite enough friction for me. So I'm going to just come down a little further. What happens? Well, my friction hitch binds. My friction hitch is up there waiting to do its job. And so it has bound. Let's retie this. And let's get a little bit more friction. How do we do that? So this is halfway between a munter and a super munter. It's something I came up with. And this is the way I repel. Underhand loop to the left, fold that over, and then bring this up. So that there is the way we'd form a, a super munter. I'm just not going to fully engage it. Show it to you again. Underhand loop, fold that down, and then go up. So now my left two fingers are going under one are over one strand and under two. And I will replace them with the carabiner. So what, what's happened is I put just a little bit more friction here in the hitch. So let me get the slack out. And I'm gonna break my friction hitch. My bridge out of the way. That's about the right amount of friction for me in a rappel. But I'm going to show you how to get more because you, you might weigh more. Or your rope characteristics might be slightly different. So now I'll engage the full super munter, which is underhand loop. To, I'm doing it exactly the same way. Exactly the same way. It's just that when I put this in, I also bring it back through the carabiner. That's a super munter. If your body weight, a little greater than mine, I'll take the slack out. Always take the slack out before you repel. And I'll, I'll hold this up like this. I'm gonna break my friction hitch again. So now I'm repelling and look, I'm not even holding the rope. It will hold me. It's a little too much friction. I have to feed rope in. Again, you weigh more. If you weigh more, obviously. So I can get down, but I'll, I'll just feed that in. Let's say you weighed even more. You need even more friction. I won't go anywhere if I show you this, but you can always put another turn here. That'd be more friction. Now I have to feed, I have to feed the rope in. Now I've heard some folks complain that, oh, well, it's tough on the rope. Well, let me tell you, I've repelled on climbing ropes for years with nowhere. You, you know, that I, is observable. 
you'd notice more wear just dragging it across a, a tree crotch for doing uh, MRS climbing. Let me get that turn out of there. Let me go back to the way I, I like it. Okay. And so disengaging, pretty simple. And this is uh, the release line now for the JRB hitch. And I want you to just pay attention to how much force it requires to get this down. That was it, and it's down. Okay, and so disengaging, pretty simple. And this is uh, the release line now for the JRB hitch. And I want you to just pay attention to how much force it requires to get this down. That was it, and it's down. Okay, guys. Well, hopefully, between the two cameras, we learned something. So, again, Munter Friction Hitch, it's all I've ever repelled on on a repetitive basis everything else I just do to test I mean there's some um, some great devices out there and we've also got a, a figure eight which is also uh, free of a lot of failure modes you might find in mechanical devices however you also got to think about what happens if you drop that device all I have is a carabiner it's fixed on my bridge and I always have an extra carabiner and always feel safe in my repel thank you got any questions let me know